Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we'll be fleshing out the map that we have currently. We'll be adding all of the effects, uh, the fog and the colour scheme and we'll be creating a really simple course and the reason we'll be approaching this first is that will allow us to then very quickly copy this map into new and unique maps and play about with the course structure when we have the entire visual setup already fleshed out. So to begin, we're going to keep this as a very kind of clean, flat, minimalistic look, uh, just to keep things simple for the prototyping of this game. The first thing that we want to do is we're actually going to just click anywhere on the sky, and you'll see that on the right-hand side we've selected the sky sphere, which is this, basically, a sphere up here. If we press F, that will take us out to view it. Simply a spherical object with a material and some blueprint going on under the hood to update the uh, the clouds and things like that. So I'm just going to select any of these objects and hit F to come back in a bit closer. So if we make sure that we've selected the sky sphere again, we're going to come down here on the right hand side and the first thing I want to do is untick the colors determined by the sun position. Now we can see that the actor which is acting as the sun is the light source, which is this light source just here. And in fact, we can use the magnifying glass and that will take us to the object which is classed as the sun. So depending on where that is facing, the direction it's looking and things like that, we can update the sky sphere to kind of represent the time of day. Now, we're not going to need that, so we'll make sure that we have that unticked. And we also don't want anything like the clouds or having a, a sun represented in the scene like so. So what we're going to do is we are going to zero out the sun brightness, the cloud speed, the opacity, and stars, just in case we get this a bit darker. So we're now getting a little bit closer to a clean kind of flat sky skybox or sky sphere. So the next thing we're going to do to finalize this look is we're going to go down here to the different colors we have, the zenith color, the horizon, the cloud, and overall color. And we'll just be making this a single shade of gray. So if we press on one of these, drag this down, and just pick some kind of gray color. Doesn't matter too much right now, we can come back if needed. But for now, I'm just going to copy the hex value from down here. So I'll control C that, and then we'll paste that into all of the other boxes. So this is what's going to give us that nice flat look where everything's going to be the same. There's going to be no horizons or anything. It just looks as though we have that one flat color now. So if we press play, we have something looking a little bit tidier. So that's our first step. Now for the demonstration that I showed, I also added some fog and uh, made the fog match the color of these obstacles so that it would kind of hide them and it looks quite cool when they're appearing from a distance. So to do that we want to come over to the left hand side and we can see we have our visual effects tab and if we select into that we want the exponential height fog and we can just drag this in and that kind of undoes the progress we've just made but you can see that there is some grey up here so uh, we're going to work to get that back with the, uh, the grey background giving us the, the flat look that we needed. Now the other things we don't need at the moment, in fact, we can remove the sphere reflection capture as well. We don't, won't need that. And then if we go back to the, the height fog, we're just going to make some color changes here to represent a color matching closer to this blue. In fact, to do that, if we go to our materials and open the flat blue color, we can just grab that hex value we got from there as well previously. So that's ready for the changes we're going to make now in the height fog. Okay, so the first thing that I want is for the fog to be a little denser. So if we click on the fog density and just press point 0.1, so we'll instantly get a thicker fog. And if we scroll down, I think it's the volumetric fog that we want to update here. So we're going to make sure that this is a volumetric fog by ticking that. The scattering distribution should be fine by default. And then we're just going to paste in our color code into these two colors and we'll see what this does for us. Okay, so I think we're getting a little bit closer, still a bit brighter than I wanted. It's not really hiding things as much as I wanted. So we're going to do a few more things with this. Uh, now, first of all, I want the extinction scale to be something a little bit heavier, so that's fine. So we have 10 should work there. And I'm just going to grab this. You can actually grab these sliders, and I'm just going to drag that all the way to the top. And that being left as one should be fine. So we're now, there we go. That's pretty much, yeah, that's the effect I want, is that we can see that slowly coming into view as we get closer to that obstacle. It's a matching color. So the main thing here is that we know that all of these colors from the color palette are going to work quite well together. The red that I've chosen or the red that was chosen on that color palette goes quite nicely with this shade of blue that we have. And obviously a neutral white for the floor is going to work perfectly fine for these things as well. Now the other thing you'll probably notice is as I keep pressing play, uh, we get this lighting needs building warning at the top. And if you want to get rid of that, you just go to the build option over here. Simply means that things have changed in the world um, and the lighting hasn't been rebuilt to account for this. So the shadows and things may be off. Now that's not going to be hugely problematic in this type of project, but if you want to do that, we can just do a build lighting only. It should only take a second or two. 
because it's a very uh, basic map. And then when we press play again, we'll notice that that goes away. Okay, so that just means that the lighting has now been updated, the shadows should all be in the correct places, and the warning goes away. So we're most of the way there. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to grab the obstacle that we already have, and we'll bring that a little bit closer to the player start. And if we look at the top right hand side over here, we have some snapping values. So at the moment, everything's set to snap, which is perfect. Uh, we want to make sure that all of these have got the orange icon to make sure that they're snapping. And this is our transform, rotation and scale, which basically means that we are kind of working on a grid essentially for all of these. So for the transform, I'm going to set the snapping scale to 100. So we just get some more rigid movements when we're moving things around the level. And this just makes it a bit faster for us to place things and make sure that there's some kind of cohesion between how far away everything is from each other. Before finalizing that, I just want to go to the scale of the obstacle, and I'm going to take this down to be a scale of three. And that, at the moment, is perfectly central on the path, or it should be. So if we hit zero to make sure that's zeroed out, so we know that this is the very middle of the path, and then we'll just move that across a few hundred units. And the reason for that is then if we alt and drag the other direction, we know that those two objects are now an exact distance from each other. So that's minus 300 units from the center, and this one is 300 units from the center. So now when we press play, we've got something starting to look a little bit like a course. If we just repeat this, we can do some things like uh, if we just drag one of these and drag it out. And I think, in fact, to get the distance on these, maybe a 1,000 units would be fine. So I'm going to snap this up to a 1,000, Alt, Select, and Drag again. And I'm just going to make a few different rows of these, maybe five or six different rows, just alt dragging out, and then we'll come back and change the placement when we snap these back down to 100. So we'll make that a little bit tough, and we'll move that one in the middle, and then maybe the final one over here. So we can see we've got a very basic course. So then if we press play, Okay, lost straight away. Maybe that's a bit hard for the first level, so I'll just remove that one. But you can see with those snapping options, we have a really, really simple way to set up a course very quickly. Everything is going to be very precise, and we know what the units are that we're working with. So sideways, we're going 100 units between different obstacles, and then as the player progresses, you're going 1,000 units away. So with all of this ready, so I would say this now class is as level 1. This is a playable level for the first part of the game. What I'm going to do is I will go back to the content browser, we'll go back to the maps, and we can make sure that we hit Control Shift and S to save everything. And then if we just press Control W on map one, that will give us main two. And if we open this, make sure that everything else we've done is saved. We now have exactly the same map. So as an example of a really quick and easy way to make another map, I am just going to come over here and select all of the obstacles. So I've just shift selected the obstacles. I'm going to rotate those around. I need to shift them over a few hundred units and then pull them back. So just using the snapping mechanism, again, I'm going to put this up to a thousand, and I'll just pull these closer back to the player start. And there we go, it's pretty much using the same setup, but we now have map two, which as far as the player is going to be aware, looks like a completely different map. Now, of course, if you wanted to add extra maps, then you can start doing the same thing, add more complex and interesting level layouts and courses for the player. But this will be enough for us to use later on when we can come back and we can start adding a level progression system. And the main thing that I wanted to get across here is because we knew that we we're going for a set visual style so that we're going to be using a color palette that we know works well together, uh, that the sky for all of the levels I had planned were going to be the same sky box or the same color setup and everything like that. Rather than setting that up individually on each new map that you create, we can copy a map. It will take the important factors like the, the floor being here, the obstacles already being laid out in a certain way, and the coloring of the obstacles in the sky and everything. That is already and available to go. So hopefully that's been a bit of a time saver for setting up maps for this type of game as well, especially a game where it's very simple very minimalistic and the the color is not going to be changing too much as always though, if you've enjoyed this or found it useful then please do leave a like and share the video around that really helps make sure you hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content coming from the channel and as ever thanks for watching and i will see you all next time